when I first moved here, I didn't have a sense of community because I didn't have family here. And when I discovered Mong Town, I was there three or four times a week because the food felt like home to me. I love just looking at all their things, all the, like their collection of fabric, just like the intricate way that they would make their traditional clothes that you wouldn't even start to fathom. Two years ago, I started a little journalism, like an illustrated journalism project, where I would go and just sit there and illustrate like a, a Hmong chef or a seamstress or um, someone who's cooking at, at a food vendor. Um, just started compiling these things and, you know, eventually have conversations with them to kind of get their story on, hey, you know, do you love what you do and why do you do what you do? My name is C. Ryder. I am a uh, visual artist. I am Hmong American, first generation. I work with uh, watercolor, uh, pen and ink, acrylic, oil. I've done polymer clay, embroidery, all over the board. I do a little of everything. So this is just a kind of a random sketchbook that I have. Um, I always like to default to faces and this is influenced by Hmong traditional clothing as well, which is the sash instead of like the whole outfit. The earliest memory of drawing was when I was in kindergarten. My favorite subject to illustrate would always be people. Because I was always so curious. I was always that introverted kid in the corner while everyone's off playing. This is a Hmong woman. You can tell. <laughs> just by her facial features. Six or seven years ago, I decided to focus entirely on just Asian women faces and you know what, what it means to be Asian American. Uh, what does it mean to go back to your roots and incorporate some of those things into your work? You know, once I stopped thinking about who my audience is gonna be, I started drawing and creating more visceral work that is actually meaningful to me as an artist. And sometimes when I read books, I like to sketch out what I think the characters look like because I love reading too. And a lot of the, these images are just from my mind versus using a reference. I like to capture expressions, facial, especially when I'm doing portraits. I was heavily influenced by Mad Magazine <laughs> as a kid and I still am. I just love all the different styles. And that, you know, I feel like when I navigate through the landscape of art, I'm a nomad. I don't stay in one place for too long. I don't want to become complacent. So one day I'll be drawing cartoons and caricatures. The next day I'm drawing fashion renderings and you know, uh, focusing in on textiles and design. I'm kind of all over the board. We really don't know what Hmong art is. You know, I mean, some people would define it by uh, the embroidery. Some would say, oh, if it doesn't have anything to do with Hmong, um, you know, traditionally, then it's not Hmong. And so I try to, to defy that a little bit by saying, hey, you know what? I am Hmong and the kind of art I make is Hmong because that's who I am. I dream a lot and I try to create. What if I can just pretend like I can make my own cookbook? And so this one I dedicated to Hmong cooking, but I entitled it Nyo Ka Nyo Jong, which is the way that we greet each other. And it uh, translates to eat good, live well. I mean, you draw what you know, and it becomes who you are too. And so you, you know, it goes along with the chicken and the egg. Like, which came first? Is it am I creating my art based on what I love, or is it because I love it, and then I'm illustrating it? I even put a discretion here. It said warning: explicit content, because it involves how to process the chicken. <laughs> we we have chickens. We garden. Just recently, I started researching uh, herbs and. You know, the Hmong herbs that I would get from Hmong Town uh, that I would plant in my garden. And I grew up with these herbs, but I, I've never known the proper name. This one is called Galia, and it turns your broth pinkish, but that's why you don't want to throw too many in. But I do illustrate a lot of food, you know, just whatever I feel like. <laughs> but I, I, would, I would say it is heavily influenced on the things that are familiar to me. The biggest project I've ever worked on was a collaborative mural uh, located on 4th and Jackson in St. Paul, Minnesota. The subjects that we painted 
were based on Hmong influences and we picked a symbol that was meaningful to us. And so I picked the bee and I picked opium flowers. There's a gift of being able to illustrate your thoughts and your feelings. I'd like to think that people can, you know, look at my art and try to understand the person that I am or accept that that's just me. That's a part of me and there's really no explaining. <laughs> you know?